The Business Review brings you top financial news, developments, influencing currencies, commodities, global commerce, tourism, and other economic events from around the globe. Tokyo stock markets opened lower on Thursday, September 17th, after the U.S. Federal Reserve pledged to hold interest rates near zero, and a day after Yoshihide Suga was elected as Japan's new prime minister in nearly eight years. The Nikkei 225 was down 0.25%, while the broader topics shed 0.11%. Investors were eyeing the outcome of the Bank of Japan's monetary policy meeting later in the day. The bank is said to keep monetary policy steady and stress its readiness to work closely with the new government, led by Suga, who has vowed to do whatever it takes to ease the economic blow from the coronavirus. Investors will focus on what BOJ Governor Haruhiko Kuroda says at his post-meeting briefing on how the central bank will work with the new government to underpin the economy. According to official data, as the Chinese market slowly recovers, some foreign car makers are eyeing the future by boosting investment in innovative sectors, new energy vehicles, for example. China's auto market has seen growth for five months in a row after major setbacks in the first quarter due to the COVID-19 outbreak in China. The data added August sales reached 2 million units, which is up 11.6% compared with last year's number. The industry's performance over recent months are promising signs for overseas companies, including BMW's Brilliance Automotive BBA, a Sino-German joint venture based in Shenyang. Despite the pandemic's impact, the German car maker BMW has expanded its business in Shenyang and has decided to open a new battery center for its latest electrical model aimed at Chinese and global markets. The company says its expansion in Shenyang will help boost research and development and double the production of its fifth generation high voltage batteries. Work resumed on schedule even amid the outbreak. With the launch of the new center, the BBA says they're ready to further tap into electric vehicle market and lead the industry's development both in China and in the rest of the world. Sony announced on Thursday, September 17th, that its next-generation PlayStation 5 console would launch this November, priced at 499.99 US dollars and 399.99 dollars for a version without a disk drive, as it squares off against rival Microsoft's Xbox console. The pricing announcement sets the stage for a year-end showdown between Xbox and PlayStation as consumers continue to flock to gaming-optimized consoles offering exclusive titles. Sony also released a promotional video on Thursday showcasing some of the new console's graphics. Sony, which is making a stylistic departure from recent generations with a predominantly white PlayStation 5, is offering the version without a disk drive as digital downloads become standard. The PlayStation 5 will go on sale on November 12th in the US, Japan, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand and South Korea, and on November 19th in the rest of the world. The Federal Reserve announced on Wednesday that it will keep interest rates near zero for years until the U.S. economy heals from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the labor market recovers. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell spoke with reporters to discuss the central bank's decision and answer questions. Asked whether he thinks more fiscal stimulus from Congress is necessary to sustain the economic recovery, Powell said he thinks certain areas of the economy will continue to struggle without aid. He added that the vast majority of private forecasters anticipate substantial additional fiscal support. I would say the fiscal support has been essential in, in the good progress we see now. And finally, I'll, I'll, I'll note that uh, just about all, the overwhelming majority of, of private forecasters who, who project an ongoing um, recovery are assuming there will be a, dis, a, a substantial additional uh, fiscal support. 
asked if only the additional economic stimulus could come from Congress, Fed Chairman Powell assured investors that the central bank had plenty of tools of its own to boost the economy. Equities rallied to new sessions high after Powell said the Fed will keep interest rates near zero until U.S. inflation rises above its 2% target for an unspecified duration of time. We expect to maintain an accommodative stance of monetary policy until these outcomes, including maximum employment, are achieved. U.S. equities markets lost momentum in afternoon trading despite initially rising to sessions high after the Fed's latest policy decision. Tech stocks sold off and led the S&P 500 into negative territory, even as Fed Chairman Jerome Powell continued to outline easy monetary policy for the years ahead. The Bank of Japan kept monetary policy steady on Thursday, September the 17th, and slightly upgraded its view on the economy, suggesting that no immediate expansion of the stimulus was needed to combat the pandemic. As widely expected, the BOJ maintained its minus 0.1% short-term interest rate target and a pledge to cap 10-year government bond deals around zero. It also made no major tweaks to its asset buying and lending programs for easing corporate funding strains. Suga, who became Japan's first new prime minister in the nearly eight years on Wednesday, September the 16th, pledged to contain COVID-19 and push reforms after retaining about half of his predecessor Shinzo Abe's lineup in his cabinet. Analysts expect no major change to the relationship between the BOJ, the Bank of Japan, and the administration led by the new Prime Minister Suga, who as Abe's right-hand man, spearheaded the departing Premier's strategy to revive the economy with bold monetary and fiscal measures. Greece's education authorities announced on Wednesday to temporarily close five schools and one class because of newly identified COVID-19 cases just three days after the reopening. Three of the schools were asked to close until September 18th as their employees were found infected with the virus, while the rest two schools and the class were ordered to shut until September 27th. In addition, an education official in Lesbos said Wednesday evening that all schools on the island will remain closed before September 21st due to the rising number of coronavirus infections on the island. It was the second time that the island postpones the school reopening. Lesbos once planned to reopen its schools on Wednesday. Two experts from Greece's health advisory board warned that the infections may reach 1,000 cases a day and that Greece's health system may break down if residents do not act prudently nor do they carry more precautions. Greece's government spokesperson Stelios Petsas also confirmed on Wednesday the possibility of a second lockdown in some cities. The Italian airline Air Italia launched on Wednesday, September the 16th, two coronavirus-free flights a day, where passengers are offered a COVID-19 test at the airport before flying that gives the results in 30 minutes. Passengers can only travel on the flights from Rome's Fiumicino Airport to Milan's Linate if they can prove they've tested negative, either by taking the airport's rapid nasal swab test before they board or with a certificate showing they've tested negative within 72 hours before flying. The one-month trial is the first in Italy where passengers can take three tests at the airport before departure as part of efforts to help travelers feel safe when flying during a pandemic. Alitalia advises passengers booked on the flights to visit the Fiumicini's designated testing area an hour and a half before takeoff. They are not allowed to leave the area until half an hour is up and they receive the results of their swab. If negative, the passengers can proceed to depart with a doctor's certificate. If positive, they cannot board, must self-isolate and will be given a voucher for an alternative flight. Airports have been hit hard by the global health crisis and the airline hopes the promise of a virus-free flight will make people feel at ease when traveling all over again. This brings us to the end of this episode of Business Review. We hope to see you again tomorrow with news of stock markets, economic conferences, commodities, currencies, regional and international financial matters, and more.